In this video, we are going to look at a nice, juicy piece of mathematics called the Intermediate Value Theorem, and how we can use this to help us find the zeros of polynomial functions. So first, the Intermediate Value Theorem states that if f is a continuous function, and c is any number between f of a and f of b, then there is a number k in the interval between a and b, such that f of k equals c. So what we have here, we have x values a and b. And remember, f of a and f of b represent y values. Okay. So what the theorem is saying is if we pick any y value between these two, we should be able to find an x value between a and b such that the y value is equal to c. Okay. Now, this is the way you will see intermediate value theorem stated in a calculus book, because this idea has a lot of nice applications in calculus. We're going to create a slightly more specific version of this theorem that pertains more to the context of finding zeros of polynomial functions. So first of all, let's talk about this word continuous. This is a calculus term, and uh, for our purposes, we can think of continuous meaning that the graph of the function doesn't have any holes or jumps or uh, gaps in it. And if you're familiar enough with the graphs of polynomial functions, we know that polynomial functions fit this category. Okay, Polynomial functions are continuous. The graph of a polynomial function does not have any such holes, gaps, or jumps in it. So let's replace continuous with polynomial. Okay, And this next phrase, where we're talking about um, some y value between two other y values. Let's think about this in a more specific way. Okay, So instead of just picking two random y values, let's say that f of a and f of b have opposite sign. So in other words, one of these is positive and one of these is negative. Okay, So if we have one positive y value and one negative y value, what number is always between those? And uh, hopefully uh, you came up with the answer of zero. Okay? If we have a positive number and a negative number, we always know zero will be in between there. So instead of picking, again, just some random y value, let's specifically look at the case where the y value is zero. Okay? So these modifications I've made have not uh, changed the intermediate value theorem. We're just looking at a specific case of the intermediate value theorem as it pertains to polynomial functions. Okay. So now our statement is if we have a polynomial function and f of a and f of b have opposite sign, then somewhere between a and b there's an x value such that f evaluated at that number is equal to zero. In other words, we find a zero. Okay, So this can help us while we're working through the process of finding zeros. If we find a positive and a negative uh, value for our function, then we know somewhere in between those x values lies a zero of our function. Okay, So let's see how this pertains to our first example. We'll look at the third degree polynomial function. Uh, 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus 6x minus 9. Okay, so for this polynomial, remember that the rational zeros theorem tells us that we can make a list of possible rational zeros for this function by looking at the factors of the constant term, which in this case is negative 9, and the factors of the leading coefficient, which in this case uh, is 2. So if we make a list of the factors of negative 9, we could have positive or negative 1, positive or negative 3, or positive or negative 9. And if we look at the factors of the leading coefficient of 2, we have positive or negative 1, or positive or negative 2. And then the possible rational zeros for this one, I'll call that PRZ. So remember, the rational zeros theorem tells us we take every factor of the constant term divided by every factor of the leading coefficient, and that gives us a list of possible rational zeros. 
If I take 1 divided by 1, that would be 1. If I take 3 divided by 1, that would be 3. 9 divided by 1 is 9. Uh, 1 divided by 2 is half. 3 divided by 2 is 3 halves. And 9 divided by 2 is 9 halves. So this is our list of possible rational zeros for this polynomial function. And as you can see, we have uh, 12 possible zeros total if you count the positive and negative uh, for each of these values. So then our next step would be to use synthetic division and start trying uh, the values off this list until we find a zero. So the first thing you would probably try is one. So if I divide the, the coefficients by one using synthetic division, I have two, two, seven, seven, one, one, negative eight. So remember, that tells me that f of 1 is negative 8, which means 1 is not a 0. So then the next one we might try is 3. If I try 3, so 2, 6, 11, 33, 27, 81, 72 which means f of 3 is 72. So 3 is also not a 0 for this function. But notice what we do have. f of 1 is negative 8, and f of 3 is 72. f of 1 is negative, f of 3 is positive. So according to the intermediate value theorem, the specific version we talked about, then there must be a 0 between 1 and 3. Okay? So if we look at our list of possible zeros, we're looking for a number between 1 and 3, and there is only one number on this list that is between 1 and 3, and that would be positive 3 halves, okay, or 1 and a half. So instead of going down the list and possibly trying 9 or maybe trying some negative values, I'm going to go ahead and try positive 3 halves next, and I bet it's going to be a zero. So if I go ahead and try positive 3 halves and use synthetic division, this would be 2. 2 times 3 halves is 3. 5 plus 3 is 8. 8 times 3 halves is 12. Negative 6 plus 12 is 6. 6 times 3 halves is 9. And negative 9 plus 9 is 0. So that means f of 3 halves is 0 which means we found our first zero, thanks to intermediate value theorem. If it wasn't for uh, that idea, we probably would have tried a couple other numbers that weren't zeros before we ever found the first one. And then remember, that's all we need, because if I factor out the part uh, of this polynomial whose zero is 3 halves, the other two zeros for this one must come from the factor that's left, which in this case is... 2x squared plus 8x plus 6, and we could just factor that directly to find the other two zeros. I could factor out a 2, which would leave me x squared plus 4x plus 3, and that's going to be 2 times x plus 1, x plus 3. So my other two zeros for this one are negative 1 and negative 3. So if I include the first zero I found of 3 halves, we have found all three zeros now. Negative 1, negative 3, and positive 3 halves. Okay, so just for sort of a quick illustration of the idea behind this intermediate value theorem, uh, we found that f of 1 was negative 8, and we found that f of 3 was 72. Okay, so think about what that means graphically. If f of 1 is negative 8, that means the point 1, negative 8 is on my graph. So that would be somewhere down here. I have the point 1, negative 8. If f of 3 is 72, that means the point 372 is somewhere on my graph. So this might be the point 372. If we find two values that have opposite sign, that means we have two points that are on opposite sides of the x-axis, okay? 
if our function takes on a negative value, that means the graph is below the x-axis. And if our function takes on a positive value, that means the graph is above the x-axis. So if we think about the graph of a polynomial function, and we realize that polynomial functions don't have any holes or jumps or gaps in them, you know, the question we ask ourselves is, how do I get from this point to this point without crossing the x-axis? And the answer is, that's impossible. Okay, if these two points are going to be on my graph, I don't know exactly what it looks like between, you know, the two points. But to get from this point to this point, we have to cross the x-axis somewhere. Okay, the only way we could avoid that is if we jumped over the x-axis and polynomial functions don't jump. Okay, and remember a point where we cross the x-axis, that is a zero. So based on this picture, we know f has a zero somewhere between 1 and 3, okay? And that's what the intermediate value theorem tells us. If we find a point below the x-axis and a point above the x-axis, somewhere in between the two x values, in this case 1 and 3, somewhere between 1 and 3, there's got to be a point on the x-axis, and that is the location of our zero. Now let's look at a slightly more challenging example, uh, and one in which we really might want to apply uh, what we've learned about the intermediate value theorem to make this a bit easier. So let's look at the function 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 38x minus 72. Now if you think about this possible rational zero list, it's going to be much longer than the first example. Okay? If we look at the factors of the constant term, negative 72, we have the positive and negative of each of these factors, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 9, 12, 18, 24, 36, and 72. And the factors of the leading coefficient are going to be positive and negative 1 and 2. And if we take all of the factors of negative 72 divided by all of the factors of 2, we have a possible rational zero list um, of all of these values. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 9, 12, 18, 24, 36, 72, 1 half, 3 halves, and 9 halves. Positive and negative for all of those. Okay, So we have a much, much longer list, so we really want to think about ways we can uh, narrow this list down as we do the work. So let's see what happens as we work on this one. So we're going to start trying uh, some of these numbers and use synthetic division to see if we can come up with a zero or if we find an opportunity to apply what we learned uh, about the intermediate value theorem. So I'm going to try one first and if I try one I have two, two times one is two, three plus two is five, five times one is five, if I add I get negative 33, if I multiply I get negative 33, and if I add, I get negative 105. So 1 is not a 0. So then I might try 2. So 2, I multiply, I get 4. I add, I get 7. I multiply, I get 14. I add, I get negative 24. I multiply, I get uh, negative 48 and I add and I get negative 120. So f of 2 is negative 120, also not a 0. So next let's try 3. So I have 2, I multiply, I get 6, I add, I get 9, I multiply, I get 27, I add, I get negative 11, I multiply, I get negative 33, and if I add, I get negative 105. So 3 is also not a 0, and so far I've got all negative values. So we're going to keep going. Let's try 4. Okay, so if I try 4, I bring down the 2. I multiply, I get 8. I add, I get 11. I multiply, I get 44. Uh, I add and get I multiply, I get 24. I add, I get uh, negative 48. 
So 4 is also not a 0, and I got another negative value. So let's try 6. So I bring down the 2, I multiply, I get 12, I add, I get 15, I multiply, I get 90, I add and get 52. I multiply, I get 312, and if I add, that's, that's positive 240. Okay, so 6 is also not a 0, but now I've got something, because f of 4 is negative, and f of 6 is positive, which means there must be a 0 between 4 and 6. Okay? So if I look at my list of possible rational zeros, I'm looking for a number between 4 and 6. And the only one I have is positive 9 halves, which is 4 and a half. That is between 4 and 6. So instead of continuing uh, to try these in order, with possibly no luck whatsoever, I'm going to skip ahead, and I'm going to try 9 halves next. So if I try 9 halves, 2 times 9 halves is 9. I add, I get 12. 12 times 9 halves is 54. I add, I get 16. 16 times 9 halves is 72. I add, I get 0. So 9 halves is a 0 just as we suspected, okay? And then again, I'm left with a quadratic factor of 2x squared plus 12x plus 16, and I can just try to factor that directly to find the other two zeros. Or remember, if we can't factor this, we can always use quadratic formula to find uh, the other two zeros. This one is factorable, however. I could factor out a 2, and x squared plus 6x plus 8 is x plus 2x plus 4. So the zeros for this one are 9 halves, negative 2, and negative 4. Okay. So in summary, the intermediate value theorem can be used to find zeros of polynomial functions more quickly but you can also find the zeros of a polynomial function without ever using intermediate value theorem, okay? So this is not a must, this is just a potential shortcut, so it is a good tool to have in your algebra toolbox, so to speak. Now, uh, just to caution you, please remember that this is all based off the rational zeros theorem, which gives us a list of possible rational zeros. Sometimes polynomial functions have irrational or even imaginary zeros. So this is not a list of all zeros, it is a list of all rational zeros. So if our work uh, tells us that f has a zero between 1 and 3, like in our first example, it might not be the number on our list that's between 1 and 3. Or in some cases, there might not be a number at all on your list between 1 and 3. Okay. All that means is f has an irrational number between 1 and 3 as it's 0. So even if we do see an opportunity to apply intermediate value theorem, it still might not help us. Okay, So don't think that uh, this always, always, always works. It is just something that can be helpful and can save you some time. Uh, all we're doing is maybe changing the order in which we try the numbers on our list. Uh, when we do synthetic division. But it is worth trying, as you can see in the second example, that probably saved us quite a bit of time uh, when I skipped ahead and tried nine halves uh, to see if that was my first zero, and in fact it was. Okay, uh, hopefully you found this uh, helpful.